So the UAT was designed as an alternative to subject keyword lists um, that are used by journals and publishers. And we already have interest from some publishers in using the UAT. Uh, the AIS will be is planning to use the UAT for the journals, um, and IOP and AIP are also interested. We also have some institutions interested in using the UAT. Um, notably, we have the Space Telescope Science Institute. They'll be using the UAT to tag data sets to make it easier to, to browse and organize those. And the Chandra X-ray uh, Telescope Group at the Center for Astrophysics is also interested in using the UAT to tag research proposals so that they can sort and evaluate them more efficiently. Uh, of course, also the ADS will be using the UAT. They'll be indexing incoming papers that don't already have UAT keywords assigned um, with these words. And they will also be going back to their current data, data set and indexing all of those articles with the UAT. And the reason why this is really beneficial is that all of these platforms and all these articles from all these different publishers will have a consistent set of keywords. Right now, different publishers are using different words. Um, those words may not be mapped correctly. They may be used slightly differently. The list may not be mapped correctly between them. So if you're doing a search using keywords, you may not pull up all the relevant results. But if we're using a uniform layer of keywords across everything, it will help to, to bring out those relevant results. And as I alluded earlier, um, the UAT, the plan is to have uh, the breadth and the depth to use it across all fields of astronomy and all disciplines, um, not, any narrow, not just specific narrow piece, parts of astronomy. So you can use the UAT to tag software, uh, articles, conference papers, conference abstracts, uh, data sets, you know, basically anything in astronomy is, is what you'll be able to use the UAT to tag. This will also help with filtering search results. So you can, if you bring up a search result in like ADS, you get you know, tens of thousands of hits. You can use the ADS to narrow down that to a more succinct subset of results that are gonna be relevant to your research. And the reason that the UAT specifically can do this is that it's actually not a flat list of keywords. It's going to have, or it does have, a, a structured hierarchy that defines relationships between terms. Um, if you, you can programmatically just look through abstracts and pull out you know, keywords and arrange those into a list, but there's, nothing, there's no way to tell a computer that maybe general relativity is related to gravitation or that hot Jupiter is our type of exoplanet. You have to have some system to tell a computer that so that it can, it can form those links and bring up relevant results. So that's what the hierarchy does. It starts with broader concepts and lets you kind of narrow down to more specific concepts that will be you know, useful to you. Uh, it also has related term links, and that makes it really unique. For example, you have the term like maybe solar wind, and you have stellar wind. And those two are, are pretty obviously very similar. One is very specific to our sun, and one is general about all stars. But solar wind is basically a type of stellar wind. But these terms in the UAT exist in very separate places, and they're not connected in any obvious way. So we have this related term link, so that if you are doing a search for stellar wind, uh, it, it will suggest maybe you'd also be interested in some results about, about, st uh, about solar wind to kind of you know, get, your re to get the right results that you're looking for. Um, and so the hierarchy doesn't show that it's these related term links that, that it has that. The UAT is also being built using uh, open link data standards, which means that it's, it's usable by any system that also uses these, these uh, known standards. It's interoperable and it can be just easily incorporated into other systems. Uh, there have been other projects in a very similar nature in the past. And the UAT is, is kind of a conglomerate of all of those. The original seed of this particular project started with um, IOP and AIP deciding to update their keyword lists and then getting together and merging that. They also incorporated terms from the IAU and IVOA thesauri. And that set was all brought together and donated to the AAS. Um, and we put that online in late 2014, and we're calling that, uh, we call that like UAT beta. It was kind of our first release of what we have, this data set. Um, in the intervening year, since, since then till now, 
We've been working with subject experts and researchers from a variety of institutions to update the UAT and bring it more in line with the way that researchers expect you know, to, to find the information organized. Um, so they reviewed it, they contributed suggestions, and we've done a lot of reworking and restructuring. Most notably, we reorganized the entire top level to be more in line with the IAU divisions. Um, that seems pretty popular <laughs> from other talks today as well to do that kind of structuring. Uh, we removed about 300 terms and we added 200 new terms. Um, and we put that all up online in uh, last month in just December, and that's version one of the UAT. Um, it was a major improvement to what we had. But we're also planning to do some other future uh, improvements and upgrades and large in expansions. So some of the larger ones is we, we would like to encourage more international particip participation. Um, the first pass review of the UAT was done mostly with researchers and institutions within the United States. And so we really want to get that broader scope. We're we'd hoping to work with the Royal Astronomical Society and we have plans to work with the Australian National Data Service um, as well to kind of expand the reach and make it, make it broader and worldwide. Um, other specific ideas for expansion is in adding an instrumentation taxonomy where we describe specific telescopes and the different astronomical instruments that go with those telescopes. And we'd also like to use the linked data aspects of the UAT and connect it with other vocabularies. And then other improvements we're looking to make is, is to make it multilingual. Um, the IAU, IAU thesaurus is available in like French and Spanish and German and several other languages. But right now the UAT is only in English. So going along with our, with our hope for international participation, we want to make it multilingual and more accessible worldwide for astronomers. And we'd also like to enrich it with definitions for each term. And so right now we're looking at the Observatory of Paris Dictionary and hoping to include that information as well. So those are kind of some broad and large updates that are coming, but we're, the UAT is also meant to be a, a living thing. It'll be continually updated to reflect the, 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 even the small changes in astronomical research. So this is an overview of the contribution workflow where a, a subject expert or research can suggest a change. Maybe they, a term needs to be renamed because we're calling it something different now. Um, that suggestion would be hopefully um, automatically assigned to a UAT editor who is kind of in charge of the branch where that change has been made. Um, that UAT editor would evaluate the change and decide if it should be included or not. They may work with the person who suggested it originally to kind of get it to fit in with the UAT. Um, if they decide to accept the change into the UAT, it would, be, it would then uh, go on to be reviewed by the project manager. And what they would basically do is just make sure that that change that's suggested doesn't conflict with any other changes that have been recently made. Maybe two people want to change the same term in different ways. So if there's a little discrepancy like that, um, you know, they would get together with those editors and kind of figure out the best way to, to make that change. Um, and if there aren't any problems, then that's fine. Um, either case, it would become validated and be ready for the next release. And this is kind of just an overview of the release cycle. Um, all those validated changes get published, and the new version is released online, and we update you know, the website and everywhere you can find it. And then we also make sure to archive the previous version so that you can always look back at the history and how these terms have changed over time. So we're looking at maybe a, a, a time frame about every six months to a year, kind of depending on the volume of changes we get for the UAT for new releases. So if you're interested in looking at the UAT and, and browsing the terms that we already have, you can visit our website. It's astrothesaurus.org. Um, you can also download the, the raw data files for the UAT at the GitHub link, um, which you can also find on the website. And if you're interested in contributing to the UAT, um, you can contact us directly. You can use our contribution form on the, online if you have a specific suggestion to make. We also have something we're calling the sorting tool, which lets you uh, expand and browse through the hierarchy. But it also lets you click on a term to drag and drop it and move it somewhere else to kind of reorganize and, and rearrange and visualize how you might restructure certain sections. Um, I should say that those restructuring using the sorting tool exists 
only in your browser. It'll, it'll all get deleted if you refresh the page. Um, so there's a download button that you click and you get a change log and you can submit that to us if you have the structural changes that you'd like to make. So uh, that's what I have for the, to present the UAT and if there are any questions, uh, go ahead. <laughs> In the back first. It's, it's you. <laughs> so, uh, this may be, uh, so what I'm, uh, I'd like to ask you if this is out of scope for the UAT. But one thing that I'm, I'm particularly interested in is being able to apply metadata to data sets that describe what's contained in the data set. So, uh, you know, like from simulations, you might have to look at the temperature, velocity, and so on. Is that type of application out of scope for the UAT? Is that fine range? Um, I mean, those exact terms like, like density and temperature aren't really included in the UAT right now because we're focused more on sp things more specific to astronomy. But if that's something that people really want to do, then we can definitely, add, you know, those can be added and expanded. Um, like I said, we want it to reflect what's, what people want to use it for. Um, so that would be something we could include. Yeah. Thank you. Right here. I'll just follow up on that. Um, the IBA, IBA universal content descriptors are pretty much exactly what that is. Uh, so the idea of UCDs say what is in a data file in a fully standardized manner. Um, but uh, I've got a question. So what happens in the case where a keyword is removed in three years' time and you've got all this data that's been tagged with the keyword that's now obsolete? Um, well, we will have a system in, in place to, to keep links to those older terms as well. Um, usually if a term is removed, it's actually integrated into a different term. Um, for example, in the beta, we had sunspots, which was two words, and sunspots, one word. And so obviously those are the same thing. So in the, in the process, we made one of those an preferred version of the other. Um, so I mean, I guess it just depends on how much the research changes. But I think most likely it'll be integrated into a better way to describe something rather than outright deleted. Because if the term is useful, then it's useful, right? And we should keep it. All right, on the left. One thing I see in just about every paper that's ever written uh, is the use of acronyms. And they keep changing, or they're uh, duplicate meanings. Is there going to be a set of all the acronyms that they're using? Uh, yeah, and I keep forgetting to repeat the questions, but that was about acronyms and how they're always changing. Um, yes, so I, I didn't go over it in the talk, but um, all terms have the option to have non-preferred versions. So if you're searching for an acronym, it, it will come up with the preferred version, which is probably the, the fully spelled out version of it, um, depending on which one we want to highlight as the preferred term. Um, and that's probably going to come out a lot in maybe instrumentations, because I know we have like the VLA and all sorts of different acronyms for those. So does that answer your question? Okay. <laughs>